Hello, welcome to Beta Armaments YouTube channel. I'm Jason Prather, a firearms enthusiast, a deputy sheriff, and a contributor to Beta Armaments channel. In this video, I'll be reviewing a couple of duty belts. Hopefully, it will get you to think about how you hang your gear and what works best for you. Truthfully, there's no wrong ways to set up your gear. However, you should put careful consideration into it. After careful consideration, I'd recommend trying to access everything and reevaluating the configuration. One important consideration should be how easily articles can be accessed by either hand. Should the need arise, you can grab the partic that particular item on your right side with the left hand. How likely would you actually need that item should you lose the use of your closest hand? So there is a idea about items being ambidextrous that is based on a triangle that extends from the tip of your chin to the side of your hips. Everything within that triangle will be more or less ambidextrous. Depending on your flexibility, it may be a bigger triangle than that or it may be smaller. So here is a duty belt. Uh, this is in basket weave and this is pretty common for most law enforcement setups. So we're going to start at the buckle near the front right hand side being right handed there's a handcuff case we have our holster on this particular setup there's a knife behind the holster this is nice it's a nice tool to have there's nothing wrong with having a good knife a good knife is always a great tool behind that is going to be the asp uh, the expandable baton and then pepper spray and somewhere about the middle is rubber gloves Another set of handcuffs, radio, flashlight, taser, triple mag holder, and a little, you can't really see it, a little clip for holding keys. This is really nice because with keyless entry, you have your keys right there, either hand accessible. Okay, so filling out the duty belt. We have handcuffs. These are uh, ASP branded hinge set. I keep them loaded toward with the swing arms to the front. So it's nice and easy access. Take them, flip out, ready to roll. They run right in front. Firearm. Fixed blade knife. Spanable baton, pepper spray. Now, being right handed, most of my weapons are going to be on the right side. That's just my preference. Some people will actually prefer to have that baton somewhere closer to the front. The idea behind that being that if the baton is extended, you have it in your hand, you need to transition, you have somewhere to go with that baton. Back here, it's going to be tucked away. It's it's more difficult to reholster the baton to transition to something else in this configuration. However, there's a trick about that as well. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Then we go to backup set of handcuffs. Once again, load it together, swing arms together, going towards the front. Radio pouch, flashlight, which is on the charger. Taser, and mags. So when you're wearing the duty belt, there's actually a nice space right here behind the mags, between your body and the mags. Usually there's a little bit of body armor here to give you another barrier. This is a nice little shelf to stick stuff, temporarily. You know, if you need to just set something down to use your hands for a moment, It'll fit right back in here. You can keep your hands free for just a few moments. It doesn't stay very well, so you will have to transition back to it very quickly. All right, so here's another example of a duty belt. Pretty much the same stuff. It's just trimmed down for stuff that isn't quite as applicable for training environments. This one is in nylon. Again, pretty much the same setup. Handcuff case to the front. Firearm, 
fixed blade knife, baton holder, another mag or another handcuff case, flashlight holder, mag pouch. So this one isn't set up to be quite as versatile and daily use as the other belt. However, this one has the stuff that is more common for training, including having the two items that could get in the way of my hand as I draw. Again, your mileage may vary. You will probably want to play around, see what you like, where you like items. I'd recommend it doing it that way. Put it up, put it together, see how you like it, use it a little, and then reevaluate and reconfigure as necessary. So just a couple of closing thoughts here. A knife is a great tool. Uh, I wouldn't recommend the fixed blade for everyone, uh, but you should have some type of cutting tool. Shears, a folding knife, whatever, whatever works best for you. So this is kind of be a central theme for me in reviewing gear on this channel. Do what works for you after you've given it careful consideration. What works for the next guy may work for you, you may be able to optimize it and help them out. Or you have to strike out and configure your gear in a unique way. The duty belts displayed here were largely configured ambidextrous use and weapons retention. It's not a bad setup and it may not be the best. However, I know the user of this belt is always evaluating placements, usefulness, and improvements on what he has. I would ask anyone viewing this video to do the same, evaluate, try it out, improve it, and practice, then wash, rinse, and repeat. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing to the Bit of Armament channel. At this time, I'd like to thank you for watching again, and thank all those who have supported me in other ways in chasing the dream of Bit of Armament. So here's one more quick example of a duty belt. This was actually my father's. Uh, it's had much, much better days. Snaps are broken. Snaps are crusty. Had a hard life in the marine environment. So what I did was I just shrunk it down and now my daughter uses it for playtime. She has a little toy that fits in here. She'll put other stuff in the handcuff case. Just an idea to keep around your old duty belts, your old gear. Kids sometimes like to play with them.